Hello, welcome to this presentation on ENCODE and DECODE functionality. Please note that this functionality was first introduced in Uniface 9.4. In this presentation I'll discuss the definition of hash functions, followed by block ciphers and their appropriate modes of operation and initialization vector usage. Then I'll discuss the proc functions that actually give support to this functionality and then there'll be a two-part demonstration. Hash functions take data and basically encrypt it into a fixed length of data which cannot be recognized. Uh, it is also impossible to reverse engineer the resultant hash string. This is perfect for those types of applications where a user may create a password, store the encrypted or hashed version of that, and all we this require from an application point of view is that on future occasions when the user logs in again, they re-enter the data, it's hashed to the same algorithm, and the results are compared. It's never actually necessary to know what the actual resultant hash is. You can see the list of supported hash functions on this slide. On the other hand, block ciphers are used to take the data, encrypt it, and then have the capability of decrypting it at some future time. This is made possible by the use of a symmetric key. It must be used during the same one must be used during encryption as well as decryption. Note that there are five different algorithms supported here. In addition to using this type of uh, encryption algorithm, note that some modes operation don't actually fully disguise the data. You can see here that uh, in ECB mode you've lost color information but not uh, outline information. And it's necessary to use other modes of operation to fully disguise the source. All modes except ECB require an initialization vector, just another string that's used to seed the encryption process. It's not actually necessary to keep that secret as the that is the purpose of the actual key. This could be a potentially uh, interesting and deep topic to study and thus I've made a reference to the Wikipedia article on this subject. You should probably read this if you want to make some decisions about choosing which algorithm to use in your application. The actual 4 geo proc statements used are dollar encode and dollar decode. They share the same uh, syntactic requirements. You can see there that the algorithm is the first parameter, followed by the source of the data that's going to be processed, and optionally the key, mode, and initialization vector parameters. These are dependent on the choice of algorithm. Note here that the source and indeed the destination should either be a text or raw data type. This obviously depends on which direction you're going. Also note that the key uh, is actually required for the block ciphers and that depending on the algorithm the key has to be a specific length or a choice or range of lengths as documented on the slide. Because that return value is a binary string, or a binary uh, type data, can contain binary zeros, etc., it is only practical that to use the Uniface raw data type, which is binary safe. Of course, if the algorithm is of type base64, hex, URL, or uString, you can use a regular string data type, in which case the data is returned in UTF-8 Unicode um, coding. Note the URL um, type is actually used, uh, algorithm is actually used to take the situation where you might have um, web URLs or query strings that contain blanks in them. This will automatically replace those with the percent %20 to make it safe to use as a URL. The uh, hex uh, one we'll see during the example, uh, practical use of the hex algorithm. Note that the uString won't convert from one character set to another. It's just for taking from non-string types of um, data strings to string. 
and now I'll demonstrate this functionality. This demonstration will show a typical login scenario. First let's have a look at the application model here. There's a table called auth, A-U-T-H, and has two fields in it only for this demonstration. The username and the field that will hold the password. Note that they are simple and uh, strings in both cases. And we can see what's actually in the table by doing a quick select all statement. Three rows and we can see that the password field contains a hexadecimal representation of an encrypted password. Here is the form that we will use for test. As you can see over here in the structure pane, the auth entity is painted, but in fact the three fields there are not from the database at all. There is one field to accept input for the username, one field to accept the input for the user password, and they will clearly enter that in plain text for encryption, and the login button to actually pro do the processing of that. We can see if we actually have a look at the password field is described as non-display and the edit box setting shows no display character 42 which equates to the asterisk here. Looking at the code in the detail trigger for the login button we can see the declaration of one raw field uh, sorry uh, variable name and one string variable name. After some basic testing to see that all the required data is entered, we see the use of dollar encode here using the SHA1 algorithm, taking the input password and saving it in the raw variable declared above. In turn, that raw variable is uh, converted or encoded into hex format and saved as the password hex, the pass hex variable. We then take the username, retrieve against the auth table, and here's the basic test, provided that the read was successful and that the encrypted version of the password compares with the encrypted version of that that was entered just now. If that's successful, then the user can actually move to the next form, else we get a message indicating a failure and then a clear and prompt to do it again. So clearly the actual database table isn't the raw encrypted password. If your database system can handle such a field, then uh, you can store the direct uh, raw field into that database location. But for the purposes of illustrating the results of the encryption, we've chosen to use the hex variables as an intermediate display. Demonstrating this form is straightforward. Basically, you'll recall there were three fields, test1, 2, and 3, or three users by that name. We type in test1, but deliberately type in rubbish. We obviously expect the login to fail. We repeat that, test1, test1 is the password I know, and the login is successful. And we move to the next form, activating demo. The demo form will comprise the second part of this demonstration and will show block cipher usage in action.